This is uh, artwork is the, from the original idea from behind the bounty hunters, and what that was going to be is a group of superheroes who were uh, like alien superheroes who were out to do, to get uh, Jack because he's like a, a great bounty. But um, it never really solidified. I didn't never like the story because superhero bounty hunters didn't really work, and so I ended up changing it to um, kind of like li- alien lion bounty hunters. So this was like a Shogun warrior style. This guy uh, was a Vortex. He was the, the kind of, uh, I think his first name was Oracle and then Vortex I liked. Uh, but he's uh, mind, mind control. Uh, Tarak, he, uh, I forget what I wrote, but he definitely is transportation. That's the way he got around, which was kind of influenced from the Herculoids and from uh, uh, and humans, the comic book. So there's like the group and the little guy. I think she was... She wasn't stretchy. I forget what her power was. But the little guy was like a gymnast. Oh, she's a shapeshifter. That's right. <coughs> so she became different animals and shapes. And they were all trying to uh, catch catch Jack. Inshallah. <laughs> so as you can see, there's like a little sketch where she gets kind of big. And she's a spider down the bottom right. Just never The story never clicked enough. And this is some of Dan Crawl's original uh, Gladiator design. Who kind of ended up using, but he looked a little different. This is another <laughs> Dan Crawl uh, Gladiator idea. A little too SM, but he's still pretty cool. This was for the Rave. So for the Rave episode, we did hundreds and hundreds of drawings. So I think me, Lynn Naylor, Shake, uh, Chris Mitchell, Paul, Dan Crawl, we all kind of sat down and just sketched out hundreds and hundreds of Ravers. Because uh, one of the keys that I wanted for the uh, dancing episode, the rave episode, was to have just, not to kind of chintz out and have like five or six dancers, but just almost every scene has a new design of a, of a creature dancing to give it really a lot of um, detail and to the show. So we just had a, day, a real fun day of just drawing weird creatures in rave costumes. And then the storyboard artist got them so that they would do the board with these type of things involved in, in mind. And then, uh, <laughs> there's Christmas. <laughs> and then they would end up, uh, and then we'd get back to the design department once it goes through production. And they had like three weeks or four weeks to design all the characters. But there were hundreds of dancers. So, uh, yeah, just kind of, and also just almost nail the style that we want to do in it. And we had this really cool book book called Fruits which is uh, like Japanese teenager fashion of like, not ravers, but just the way the kids dress in Japan. It was this huge, thick book, like a dictionary. And it was amazing how many cool outfits they came. So a lot of the stuff was inspired from that. It was a a really hard episode to do because you had to choreograph all the dancing. A lot of times, if I come up with episodes, it's like I have a vignette that I'd like to see, and then we kind of build a story around it, like Jack and the Scotsman on the bridge. That was the idea. For the uh, rave, it was just uh, Jack... In a rave outfit, <laughs> and they worked backwards. Yeah, like with you know the big Dr. Seuss hat and the pacifier, and the big baggy, uh, real baggy jeans where you could see his boxers. Inspirations and in general, you know, it's kind of like everything that we like. I mean, that was the whole idea behind Jack. So I didn't want to be limited to a time like a Jack ends up in in uh, you know in Greece time. Or I wanted to do, I wanted the show to go everywhere, so we could do you know everything from Greeks to feudal Japan to ravers. You know, so just made this weird right. weird future city where everything is possible or future world. 